knows I got the magic in me When I hit the floor, the girls come snapping at me Now everybody wants a blast of magic, magic, magic Magic, 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 oh ooh. Blow your mind. mind. Pick a verse, any verse. I hypnotize you with every line. I'll need a volunteer. How about you? With the eyes. Come on down to the front. Stand right here and don't be shy. I have you time traveling. Have your mind babbling. People trying to inherit the skills, so they ask me. Even David Blaine had to go and take some classes in. I see my freak like, what's up, man? What's happening? So come on, and come on and see the show tonight. Prepare to be astounded. No ghost or poltergeist. You know I'm no Pinocchio. I never told a lie. Hi, I'm Emmett Smith. Sports has given me a lot to smile about over the years. But as an athlete and the father of young athletes, I know how important it is to protect yourself from injury. That's why I've teamed up with the American Association of Orthodontists to encourage athletes to play it safe. I've seen firsthand how quickly an accident can happen when out on the field, the court, or even the dance floor. Wearing protective gear like mouth guards, face masks, and helmets can reduce the risk of injury and keep you in the game. Visit braces.org. Dub Chevrolet Buick and Cadillac supports Ellenwood Eagle Athletics. When you're ready to make your next vehicle purchase, stop by Dubs for a test drive. See Rick, Marty, or Rob for details on all the latest cash incentives or low interest financing. They'll do their best to match you up with a vehicle that best meets your needs for comfort, reliability, and value. You'll be glad you chose Dove Chevrolet Buick Cadillac on West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Good luck, Eagles. The Ellenwood Booster Club would like to wish all the Eagle athletic teams good luck this season. Support the Eagles and join the Ellenwood Booster Club by contacting a Booster Committee member. The Ellenwood Booster Club, a proud supporter of Eagle Sports. Dole Insurance Group of Ellenwood would like to wish all the Ellenwood athletes good luck all season. For all your insurance needs, stop by Dole Insurance Group, located on East Santa Fe, and visit with Richard. Dole Insurance Group, proud to support Ellenwood Eagles Sports. Hello and welcome back to Ellenwood High School as we're going to wrap up the Ellenwood preseason basketball tournament here tonight as the Ellenwood Eagles square off against the Sterling Black Bears. I'm Travis Reese, joined beside me is Les Valen, back in the studio, the engineer Jared Baser, and we're going to bring you probably another exciting basketball game. Quickly we'll run through your starting lineup for the Sterling Black Bears. We're going with Trey Lott. Seth Humphreys, Aaron Walton, Austin Maxwell, and Chad Bennett. For the Ellenwood Eagles, they're starting out with Kyle Corbett, Corbett excuse me, Kyle Blakely, Patrick Ringering, Kale Clawson, and Ian Goring, Gehring, excuse me. For the Ellenwood Eagles, bring in my color analyst, Wes Balin. And, and Wes, this should be a very exciting game as Ellenwood trying to finish the, the tournament on a high note. Oh, this is a really fierce rivalry. Last year, the teams met three times. Sterling came in here on senior night and just pounded the Eagles down in what I remember as the senior night massacre, 69-47. But then Ellenwood came back a few days later with Sterling hosting Substate, thinking that they had a chance to go a long way, and Ellenwood bounced them out in the first round. So I know Sterling remembers that. There aren't a lot of guys on the Ellenwood club that were part of that team. But Sterling's definitely got a little revenge factor going for him tonight. Ellen Woods having just five seniors on their roster. A very young squad, but still has some talent there. They're going to have to try to defend the size of Sterling. And Sterling's going to start a 6-4, a 6-2, a 6-1, and another 6-1 guy. Well, 
Ellen Wood's going to counter with 5'10", 6'1", 5'10", 6 foot, and 6'3". Sterling also has a 6'4 guy that can come off the bench and provide a little bit of size. Actually, two of them that, come, that can come off the bench, a senior and a sophomore. Uh, so we'll have to see how well Ellen Wood can establish some rhythm and try to take away uh, some of the size and some of the athleticism from Sterling. As we're going to start the game with Austin Maxwell dipping off against Kyle Blakesley. You got it right. It's not just size. Sterling has everything. This is a dynamite ball club, as good as any that will come to Ellenwood this year. Humphreys has it at the top of the key over to Lott on the wing. Humphreys drives, trying to penetrate the 2-3 zone of, of Ellenwood. Back outside. And Chad Bennett knocks in his first three of the night, and he opens up the scoring just underway here in Ellenwood. Sterling already up 3 to nothing. Well, Sterling's got a number of guys that can hit that three, and Chad Bennett's not someone you want to give an opening to. Kyle Corbett trying to establish some offense. He's going to draw the foul on Trey Lott. It looks to be a matchup of significance tonight as the two point guards roughly the same size, and they're going to be battling out the entire night trying to establish the offense. Corbett looks over to, the, to his coach, sets up the play, and Ellenwood trying to get some offense going to counter the quick three-point shot. As Corbett drives inside the lane, shot falls off and pulled in by Sterling. Sterling just doesn't give you very many second opportunities with all that size and athleticism inside. Humphreys over to Bennett, off the back of the iron for three, but Humphreys pulls in the rebound. Back inside to Bennett, he fires up an inside shot, and they're going to they're gonna say this one was tipped, and a good call there by the officials, Austin Maxwell, going inside. The shot was near the near the top of the cylinder. It was tipped in, clearly tipped in. So they, this one should not count. We'll have to wait till we get the official word from the official, and he's saying it is no shot. So we've got the first foul on Ellenwood, and it's going to be on on Kale Clawson, his first. So each team having a a pair of personal fouls here early on in the ball game. Kale's really trying to find a role on this club. He works as hard as anybody, but he hasn't been able to score. He hasn't really rebounded. He just goes out there, and so far he's just worked his tail off. But he's going to—he's looking to find that role on the club as this team tries to find an identity. Bennett misses the first of two free throws. Second one up, and off the back iron as well. Clawson pulls in the rebound. Bennett goes over from the free throw line. Really important for Ellenwood to maintain pace and composure here. Sterling wants to get out and go. Ellenwood needs to keep it into a half-court battle. Gehring trying to find somebody does, and Corbett drives baseline, puts this one up, and has it rejected by Humphreys. It's Seth Humphreys getting his first block on the night. Or excuse me, no, it was not Humphreys. It was Brett Patterson checking into the game for the first time, so he gets the block instead of Humphreys. Corbett goes right back to the same spot, fires up the shot, comes off the side of the rim, and pulled in initially by Ellenwood as Kyle Blakesley pulled in the rebound and they're going to call a foul on Sterling. This one's going to go out of bounds and that's going to be Seth Humphreys' first personal foul, second team foul of the first half. Love the start by Kyle Corbett. It's two good takes, getting himself on the baseline for makeable shots. Not settling for the three, but getting to the hole. Outside to Clawson, goes back over to Ringering. Over to Clawson again, trying to get the offense going. Clawson drives baseline, runs into his own man, and actually falls over. That'll be the first turnover of the night. And it goes against Ellenwood as Sterling has the ball. Three to nothing. Sterling with the early lead on the Bennett three-point shot with 6.20 to go. Back on the outside, and they're going to call it travel. This is going to be the first Sterling turnover. And that one was on Patterson. He has checked into the game early and he gets the first Sterling turnover. Let's see if Ian Garing can get down low and create a little post presence here in the lane. We haven't seen that much. He's going to come out and set a screen. Corbett drives baseline. It's, that's been kind of his favorite move. It's inside Clawson posting up. Garing going to go over the top and knock it in. Ian Garing has his first two points of the night. He floated up over the top of Bennett knocking this one in. Ian Garing coming off a dynamite game last night, double-double, and if I honestly, if the guards would have got him the ball a little more, he could have been 15, 20 points easy. Inside, Sterling goes back, and the shot is missed by Maxwell. The rebound is tipped to him, but he was on the out-of-bounds line, so that'll be the second Sterling turnover, and 
Elmwood getting a little break as Maxwell had an open look at the bucket. Well, here's a press to see what Elmwood can do with it. They're going to back it off. Sterling just going with the token man press, just manning up your defense, making it a little bit tougher for Elmwood to get the ball in, but they do and get it out to Gehring, who goes to the outside with Ringer Ring, fires up a three and pulled in by Corbett on the miss. Scrum for the ball on the floor, and this one should be a tie-up. Will be, and it's going to stay with Ellenwood on the alternate possession. Great flash by Kyle Blakesley. I honestly think he needs to take that shot in the lane, take a drop step, get, get to the rack and see what happens. Kyle and Kyle are the scorers on this team. When they pass it off, the other guys don't really have that touch yet. Uh, excuse me, ring a ring inbounds to Corbett. Misses the screen from Cloth and ball is tipped on the three-point shot and pulled in by Sterling. Speed fed ahead inside as Sterling puts this one in, and it is Brian Patterson. Brian Patterson getting his first two points of the night, and already Sterling stretching out a 5-2 to two lead. Ellenwood looks, looks a little bad. I just think trying to get the ball to the floor finally gets it over to Corbett, who walks it up, sets the offense up, trying to break down Patterson. Ellenwood got caught ball watching there a little bit, lollygagging. That happens again. Coach Duncan will go to the timeout in a hurry. Gehring has it out on the wing, trying to get it inside and forces a pass, almost goes with the over and back, but eventually it goes over to Patterson for Sterling. He drives inside the lane, and they're going to call a block inside on Gehring. That'll be his first personal, the second team foul for Ellenwood. And a good play by Gehring trying to set up the charge but his feet were moving just a little bit too much. Yeah, he might have been dragging that back foot. He was he was close, and Garrett Hayes is going to come in momentarily. He's sitting at the scorer's table. Bryant Patterson goes to the line. <laughs> Patterson knocks in the first free throw. He's got three so far on the night. Sterling's going to check in big guy Odin. He was the factor in the first matchup with Sterling last year. He actually started 13 points against the Eagles. Another one of those 6'4 guys, and Sterling going with two 6'4 guys down low as Patterson knocks in the second free throw as well. So he's got four on the night. He's got all but three of Sterling points. The other three going to Chad Bennett on the first three-pointer of the game with now Chance Clawson into the game for the Ellenwood Eagles. He almost double dribbles, gets it out on the wing to Kyle, Kyle Clawson, excuse me. Now inside to Garrett Hayes as Blakely drives down low and they're gonna call the charge on that one. We saw a similar play on the other end. Go, the, go Ellenwood, or go against Ellenwood. This one goes against him as well. That's a great take by Kyle Blakely, just a bang bang call in the lane there. You know, you, on the Sterling side, you're going to say it's a charge. If you're on the Ellenwood side, you think maybe it's a block and Kyle's going to the line. That's a good take, though. Very good. you got to establish some aggressiveness early on. Ellenwood goes back to their bench, bringing in Corbett and Ringering on that last play. So now Sterling with it out on the wing with Lott running the point. Gets it inside and back out to Lott. Fires up the three and off the back of the yard. Pulled in. By Chance Clawson. He's going to slow it up. Does not like his numbers. Set the offense back up in between the two circles. This is Chance's second game back after breaking his foot during football season. He's really out there to pressure the ball. He's a defensive factor. Offensive game still coming around. Forces it inside, and this one's going to be turned over. The second turnover, but Sterling's going to turn it right back over as Humphreys carried it. So a, a ill-advised pass by Chance Clawson but they get it back after Sterling turns it back over. And an opportunity for Elmwood here. You can't let these slip away as the game goes on. Sterling's going to get their legs under them, and they're going to be a really tough matchup for the Eagles. Right now they're struggling. You've got to get in there and compete while you can. Corbett to inbound for Ellenwood. He gets it over to Patrick Ringering. Set it up the offense for Ellenwood. Going with the two post players at the free throw line with Ringering in the corner. Gets it off to Corbett. He fires up a deep three off the side of the iron and pulled in by Sterling. Baseball pass ahead. Nearly intercepted by Corbett, but back out over to Humphreys for Sterling as Ellenwood is trailing by five with three minutes to go in the game. 
missed yeah, opportunity for Ellen Wood with that quick shot. Guy Oden on the baseline. Might be a block on Blakely, I'm afraid. There were a couple guys down low for Ellen Wood. This one's going to be on Garrett Hayes, the 5'10 junior who is into the game. As Gehring comes back in, and he's going to send a chance cloth into the bench, bench for Ellen Wood. So already the, the Eagles down by five here, only putting up one bucket on the night. And been a slow start as Lott fires up the three off the front of the rim. Nearly pulled in, and it does by Sky Odin. He puts in his first two points tonight. Stretch lead out to seven. Ellenwood ball watching. Coach Duncan always says, you don't have to be big to rebound. You just have to box out and work hard. And Ellenwood was just watching when that shot went up. Guy Odin to rebound and put back. Next Tech Wireless is offering the best deals of the year. Activate now and all phones are free. Android phones, BlackBerry smartphones, texting and camera phones are all free. You'll also receive one month of free service. Want more? Bring us your number and we'll add in $200 cash per line. Activation is also free when you donate a new toy. Come to Next Tech Wireless today for free phones, free service, free activation, and more. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. Next Tech Wireless, you're covered nationwide. And Guy Odin, who's 6'4 down low. Really, Ellenwood doesn't have that much of a, a match for him with Ian Gehring being the tallest guy on the floor for Ellenwood at only 6'3. Keep waiting to see Ian post up hard. We haven't seen much inside from the Eagle Post players. Kyle Corbett, again, got a drive, put the ball on the floor, got to the baseline, going to the free throw line. Corbett again driving from the wing, getting inside and drawing the foul. He's going to go to the line this time, and foul is going to be on Michael Gellerman in the game for the first time. His first personal third team foul. Corbett knocks in his first free throw for his first point on the night. Love what I'm seeing from Kyle. He's not settling for that outside shot. Corbett knocks in his second free throw, so he goes perfect from the line, and already strolling back across the half court. They're looking to run. Humphreys gets it over to Lott out on the wing. Humphreys back over to Gellerman. Back to Humphreys, kicks it out on the wing for Lott, fires up the three, knocks it in. Trey Lott with his first three of the night for his first point. Eight-point lead now for Sterling with 2.20 to go in the first quarter. Well, Lott's a good three-point shooter. Gellerman was, too. The Eagles covered up. Gellerman couldn't get to Lott. Corbett with a quick jumper, pulls it in, and he's got four on the night. Answers the three with just a two. Those are not the equations that Stonewood team wants to have as Humphrey. Finds Lott back out on the wing, goes over to the corner for Gellerman. Back out to Lott, over to Humphrey. Swings around, he's got Guy Odin post up, posted up inside. Decides to pull it out, goes inside. And Aaron Walton puts it in for his first two points tonight. Quickly back out to an eight-point lead, 14-6, to six, with a minute 40 to go in the first quarter. Aaron Walton was the eagle killer last year, leading Sterling in two of the three games. And this is going to be a turnover now for Ellenwood. As out on the out on the sideline, Kyle Blakesley picked up the ball with his foot out of bounds. That's the third turnover for Ellenwood. Goes right back over to Sterling as Humphrey sets up the offense, gets it over to Gellerman. Back to Humphreys at the top of the key. Over to Lottom on the wing. Inside over to Gellerman in the corner. Back to Lott. Back to Gellerman. Thinks about the three. I believe Gehring thought it was going to be a three. Was playing with his back to Odin. But the ball goes into Gellerman. He drives and flashes off the front of the rim. Tipped around and finally pulled in by Gellerman. He Gellerman a lot more comfortable around that three-point line, but that was a very nice drive. Offensive foul coming up here on Sterling. It is going to be on Walton, his first personal fourth team foul of the nine with a minute and 11 to go in the first quarter. Ellenwood only trailing by eight. Kyle Corbett keeps playing the way he is. Ellenwood's going to be very competitive in this game. And they are going to pass Kyle Corbett with the offensive foul. So Ellenwood gets the offensive foul and returns the favor right back as Corbett with a little bit of elbow pushing out on the wing trying to create some separation uh, near the half-court stripe. I didn't see that one myself on the far side of the floor, kind of separated by the Sterling defender, but someone up there in the crowd said nice elbow, and uh, the guys in the stripes agreed. It was. It's, it's another one of those very close calls as Gellerman gets it on the wing, fires up the three off the back of the iron and pulled in by Ellenwood. They're looking to run the break. They've got, a, they've got numbers as Corbett drives baseline, tries to wrap around pass, but goes right into the hands of 
Bryant Patterson. He's going to bring it up, guarded by Corbett. Breaks him down, gets him, gets him into the lane, off to Gellerman, back over to Patterson, over to Bennett, out on the wing, tries to go inside to Guy Odin. But there's going to be a foul called on Ellenwood. This one's going to go against Patrick Ringering, his first 16 foul. So it will stay out of bounds and now put through in, into the bonus for the rest of the half. Got to watch those flashes to the middle of the lane. Outside, over to Gellerman, back over to Bennett, over to Gellerman, thinks about the three, goes inside to Owens. Quick pass, round to Gellerman, who fires up the three, misses again, pulled in by Sterling. And that was Aaron Walton down low, and they're going to call another foul inside. This one's going to go on Garrett Hayes, his second, team's seventh. So it's going to be a one and one as Aaron Walton goes to the line. His first trip to the line in this ball game. Aaron Walton, 13, 13 rebounds that first game last year against Ellen Woody. Had six later on. He's eight later on and six in another. So he's definitely a force on the glass. Ellen Wood's got to box him out. He's really quick and athletic, but you've still got to get the job done inside. First shot of the one and one is up and good. As Walton gets his third point of the night. Jake Christensen came into the ball game before the free throw for Ellenwood. Trying to rotate in another one of their big guys down low. Second free throw off the front of the rim. Tipped around and it's going to go out of bounds. We'll have to wait and get the route from the official. Well, the official disagreed. One point at Ellenwood, one point at Sterling. They're going to stay with Sterling. We'll go back to Sterling on the out of bounds play. Ellenwood just flat out missed the box out on the free throw there. Patterson over to Bennett. Tries to go inside as Patterson as he Great effort. one away. Great effort by Patterson. It really was, but a little too much effort as he gets the ball, rolls over with it. That's going to be the fourth turnover so far for Sterling. They're trying to set up a little bit of a man press with four seconds. Three to shoot. Two, one, fires up a shot. And they're going to call a push on Bryant Patterson with .4 seconds to go. And this is the exact time that it takes to get off a quick shot. You've got to catch and just release. And from this, from where they are on the court, this has got to be a miraculous shot. Yeah, you're going to try and get straight into Kyle if you can. You're going to go to Ian Gary. He got it up. Fires the three, but comes up about five feet short. That's the end of the first as Sterling has the nine-point lead at 15. Next Tech Wireless is offering the best deals of the year. Activate now and all phones are free. Android phones, BlackBerry smartphones, texting and camera phones are all free. You'll also receive one month of free service. Want more? Bring us your number and we'll add in $200 cash per line. Activation is also free when you donate a new toy. Come to Next Tech Wireless today for free phones, free service, free activation, and more. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. Next Tech Wireless, you're covered nationwide. And visit with Richard. Dole Insurance Group, proud to support Ellenwood Eagles Sports. Welcome back to Ellenwood High School. As Sterling has a nine point advantage over the Ellenwood Eagles at 15 to 6 here as he starts the second quarter. Unless this has been a game where Ellenwood had some missed opportunities, haven't been able to get to the defensive glass, that's allowing for a lot of second chance opportunities for Sterling. Well, that's going to be a struggle all night for the smaller Eagles, but they've got to keep working, they've got to get boxed up, and they've got to battle through on the other end. It's going to be key if they want to hang around in this ball game. Offensively, they've made good decisions. Kyle Corbett, a guard, is actually creating a presence in the lane with his penetration. If he can keep that up, good things will happen for the Eagles. Sterling has it out of the quarter break as they're going against the 3-2 zone of Ellenwood. Humphreys has it, goes inside for Austin Maxwell. And back inside goes Bennett. He lays this one up, and then he's got five on the night and just goes straight in, just goes straight inside. As they're going to have a, an official timeout as it looks as though Ian Gehring has a little bit of blood on him. So he's possibly going to have to go out of the game for just a little while and gets looked at by Shane Duncan. And they might have to get a quick tape job on that. So Ellenwood with the ball now is Kyle Corbett. Walking the ball before against Trey Lott. Gets past him and goes back, but Lott steals it away. 
he gets it. He's going against Corbett, and he, Corbett's going to draw the foul. It's going to be his second eighth team foul, as that was just a quick, sh- a quick steal by Lott and almost a layup-saving foul by Kyle Corbett. Uh, that's a poor pass by Young. Patrick Ringering there, the sophomore, just kind of threw it blindly back into the middle of the floor, and Ellenwood got away with one, had to give up a foul to keep Sterling from scoring. It will be a one-and-one one for Trey Lott. He has three points on the night so far. First one rims out. Sterling not having good success from the free throw line as Jake Christensen pulls in the rebound, gets it over to Chance Clausen for the Eagles. Sterling not the best free throw shooting team. They're they're really all about run and gun, getting up and down as many opportunities as you can get out of a basketball game. Christensen throws this one away, but they're going to say it was tipped by Bryant Peterson, who's going to stay with Ellenwood, avoiding what would be their fourth turnover of the night. See if Kyle Blakesley can get to the high post and create something here. Blakesley has it on the wing. Quickly double team gets out of it, kicks it over to Ring Ring, who... Had an open look at the basket, but decides to set up the offense with Chance Clawson. Clawson off to Pete Christensen, excuse me, at the top of the key. Over to Blakesley on the wing. Thinks about the shot. Pull up quickly, quickly off the side of the rim and in the hands of Patterson. Feeds it ahead to Maxwell. He goes past Blakesley, but draws the foul. Gets the charge. That is going to be the first personal foul on Aaron Maxwell. He draws the sixth team foul for Sterling. With 6.48 to go, Sterling still with the 11-point lead now at 17-6. to Humphreys tips this one out of bounds, but it's going to stay with Ellenwood. you got to love Kyle Blakesley there. He comes down and misses the shot, but he doesn't hang his head. He gets back in the lane and draws the charge. Kyle Rick. Blakesley's got to be the scorer with this outfit on the floor. He's the one with the shot. They're going to call a hold inside away from the ball as Bryant Peterson picks up his second personal 17 foul. That is going to send Christensen, Jake Christensen, to the line. He's going to shoot the one and one. And coming back into the game after being taped up is Ian Gehring for the Ellenwood Eagles. Ellenwood really benefits from the way the game is being called right now. Sterling's very physical in how they defend things. The more fouls that are called, the more it will benefit the Eagles. That Gehring going to have to wait till after the first free throw as Christensen misses it, so Gehring's going to have to stay on the bench just a little bit longer. As Humphreys brings it up to 4-4, Sterling back on the wing for Lott, fires up the three, wishes it through. Trey Lott now with six, as Sterling has stretched out a 14-point lead here with 6.24 to go in the second. They're going to take a full timeout as Ellenwood will take a 30-second break. Time out on the court. We would like to take this opportunity to thank tonight's sponsors, Next Tech Wireless and Star 107.9. For over 30 years, Ellenwood Packing Plant is your main source for beef and pork cuts. Plus, don't forget about the fresh deli. Ellenwood Packing Plant wishes all the Ellenwood Eagle athletes good luck and congratulates them on achieving the teamwork, leadership, and good sportsmanship. Ellenwood Packing Plant on 56 Highway, just west of Ellenwood. Welcome back to Ellenwood High School as Sterling has opened up a 14-point lead over the Ellenwood Eagles at 20 to 6 with 6:24 to go in the first half. And Wes, this has been a, a, a point in the game where Ellenwood just doesn't seem to be able to close in on the lead and prevent Sterling from getting to the bucket. Well, they had to bring Kyle Corbett back in. You have to get another person out there who can get the ball on the floor, create his own shot in addition to shooting the outside shot. I knew Kyle would be back in soon. There just aren't that many scorers right now on this club with Kyle Blakesley and Kyle Corbett being the only experienced varsity players around right now. Chance Clawson bringing it up, guarded by Matt DeWerf in the game for the first time for Sterling. Clawson trying to find somebody, finds Ring Ring out of the wing, fires up a three off the side of the rim and out. Maxwell pulls in the rebound for Sterling. Humphreys quickly with it up the other end of the floor, trying to set up the offense. Humphreys spin move into the lane. Pulls it back out over to DeWerf on the wing. Pulls, goes inside, and, and it goes into Maxwell, excuse me, as they're going to call a traveling on Sterling, and that is Aaron Walton inside for Sterling, able to, he tried to dribble out after he was on the ground, but 
got up too quickly and wasn't able to get the dribble down. Well, that was just overpass there. They had the ball where they needed it, and then he tried to dump it off and created a whole mess for his team there. Take the shot you have. Clawson running the point for the Eagles. He gets it over to Ian Gehring. Gets inside of Patrick Ringery. Pull-up shot off the backboard and off the side of the rim. Pulled in quickly by Kyle Blakesley over. Up over Walton and gets it to fall. Blakesley with his first bucket of the night. He's got two. Cutting the lead to 12 at 20 to 8 with five and a half to go. Kyle Blakesley actually in that sub-state game last year had 20. So he led the Eagles in that last game last year. He can score the basketball. Outside to Bennett as Sterling as he dribbles back. Gets a little screen from Maxwell. Flashes the high post. Maxwell from the free throw line off the backboard and pulled in by Gehring. Gehring with it over to Ringering who walks the ball to the floor. Calls the play after he got it from Coach. He's going to get Gehring to flash above the three-point line. Goes inside to Chance Cross. And turn around shot off the backboard and no good. Pulled in by Walton for Sterling. Back over to Humphreys. And Humphreys going to set up the offense for the Sterling Black Bears. Gets it over to Walton on the wing, trying to find someone inside. Goes inside, but falls tipped, stolen by Ellenwood. The sixth turnover of the night, Blakesley brings it up the floor, kicks it back to Ringering, who's got Corbett out on the wing. He slashes inside, has the ball poked away initially. They're gonna call a hold inside. And we're gonna have to see who this one is on and whether or not he was in the act of shooting. It's gonna be on Humphreys. His second personal eighth team foul, so it will be a one-and-one. One. They're going to say he was not in the act of shooting, so Kyle Corbett going to the line for the one-and-one. One. Kyle Corbett just four points, but I really feel like he's played a dynamite game with his decision-making. seems like he's leading this team really well. Rattles in and out as Maxwell pulls in the defensive rebound and gets it ahead over to Bennett, back to Gellerman, and he's going to set up the offense to attack the 3-2 zone from Ellenwood that they've been in the entire night. Back inside to Maxwell. Turnaround shot up and over and good. Aaron Maxwell with his first, Austin Maxwell, excuse me, with his first two points of the night. As Corbett brings it back up the floor, guarded by Dwarf. Boy, that's tough. Just what I was going to say, Austin Maxwell wasn't a shooter. A great turnaround. Blakesley with the air ball from deep misses this one as Gellerman gets it ahead to DeWerf already past the half court. Back to Maxwell at the free throw line. Off the front of the rim pulled in by Clawson. Kale Clawson pulls in the, the defensive rebound. Back out to Corbett to set up the offense. Trying to come across half court and get something going for the Eagles down by 14 with three and a half to go. Got to get somebody posted up inside. Blakesley drives inside, and he's going to draw the foul against Walton. That'll be his second, ninth team foul. So we're going to have Blakesley going to the line. He's only got two points tonight on just one bucket. And so he is going to get the one-and-one one opportunity here. Kyle came late to the party tonight, but Blakesley's getting to the free throw line now, and that's going to be so crucial for these Eagles, for their two lead players, the Kyles. Kyle Blakesley, Kyle Corbett. They can get into the lane, Ellen. We can hang around in this game for a while. And if they hang around, maybe Sterling starts to feel a little pressure at some point. A lot of times, whenever teams feel pressure, they make mental mistakes. You get some turnovers. Turnovers can lead to, lead to, lead to easy buckets. Blakely, Blakely at the line, fires up his first shot, wishes it through. So he's got three on the night, cutting the lead down now to just 13. And 22 to 9 with three and a half to go in the first half. Blakesley's shot is up. Switch is through, barely moving the net. He's got four now. And a perfect two of two from the line. Jaderson in the game for the first time for Sterling over to Bennett. Back to Jaderson, over to Gellerman on the wing. Jaderson at the top of the key, feeds it to Bennett. Inside, shot up and good and over by Walton. And actually miss off the back of the rim. And they're gonna call Gellerman with a travel on the, the rebound. He tried to move his feet too quickly before he dribbled, and that's going to be the seventh Sterling turnover. Ellenwood got a reprieve there. Crucial mistake to give up the offensive rebound, but Gellerman travels with it. Now Ellenwood, chance to get this down to 10. Corbett with it. Gets inside to Gehring, tries the backdoor pass, but Chad Bennett waiting there for it. He steals that one away. The fourth turnover for Ellenwood. Jaderson over to Bennett. Back to Jaderson on the wing. Drives inside the lane, or excuse me, inside the zone. Kicks it around. Gets inside to Bennett. Out to Walton. 
Looks inside to Odin, but gets it over to Gellerman, out of the top of the key. Over to Jaderson on the wing. Back to Gellerman. He's going to slow her down and get it over to Bennett. Trying to find a hole in the 3-2 zone is Jaderson now. Dribbles back to the top key, finds Bennett, drives inside the lane, tries to get the foul, but is just stolen away by Blakesley. The eighth turnover of the night for Sterling. As then he should have a foul here as Guy Odin ran over one of the Ellenwood players out of the wing. That is Kale Clawson. We'll have to see what the official call is. It is on Guy Odin, his first. Way Can't too ambitious to pass there. The Ellen was lucky to get that one back. Kale Clawson at the free throw line. Not a real strength in his game. Clawson has yet to go to the free throw line in this game, but a very a tr an attempt to get the ball up the floor to Clawson leads the foul, and he rims this one off. Going 0 for 1 so far. He will have one more shot at it. Chance Clawson comes back into the game. He's going to send Patrick Ringering -ring to the bench. 2.24 to go. Onwood trailing by 12 at 22 to 10. Clawson's second shot is up and off the front of the rim. Nearly rebounded by Gehring, but finally pulled in by Bennett. Clawson goes 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Ahead to Gellerman, back outside to Jaderson. Ellenwood just 2 of 7 in this second quarter. It's really hurt him. An opportunity to cut into that lead. Get past to Jaderson. Guarded in the zone by Chance Clawson. Ellenwood almost looking like a 1-2-2 two, two zone at times. The ball goes inside to Walton. He lays this one in. Aaron Walton with five now. Is sitting the lead out to 14 with 1.50 to go in the first half. Ellenwood trailing 24 to 10. Ellenwood had two opportunities to get it down to 10. Was not able to do it. Now it's 14. Kale Clawson on the wing. Fires up an ill-advised shot. Trying to draw the foul but pulled in by Aaron Walton. Gets it ahead to Bennett who drives the lane uncontested, goes all the way to the hoop and lays this one in. No defense by Ellenwood as Chad Bennett has seven points and a 16-point lead now stretched out by Sterling. It's amazing how that works when you get opportunities to cut into it. Then if it doesn't happen, sometimes you hang the head a little bit. Corbett fires up the deep three off the back of the iron, pulled in by Blakesley, and he's going to draw the foul on Aaron Walton. That should be his third if it does go on him, and it does. That'll be the third personal foul on Walton. Unbelievable rebound by Kyle Blakesley there. He really had to climb the ladder to bring that one in. Great job there. Great effort by him going up and getting the rebound, drawing the foul. He's going to go to the line to shoot two. First one is up and off the back of the iron. Blakesley is now two for three from the free throw line tonight. He's got four points will have his, an opportunity to get his fifth if he can knock in this free throw. Second free throw is up and runs in. Blakesley knocks it down. He's got five on the night, cutting the lead to 11 to 26. Back out to Lott, over to Jaderson, that's about 15 foot out. Misses it, but Odin rebounds and puts it back in. Guy Odin with four now on the night, stretching out the big lead to 17 for Sterling. Guy Odin's a kid that knows his role, stays well within himself. He's not really a scoring threat, but if you don't box him out, he can still end up with 10, 12, or 15. That's 6'4". He's a great rebound. As Blakesley drives in, contests Odin, has his shot blocked, but gets it right back, and he's going to draw the foul. They're going to say this one's on the floor, however. He still will get the two shots with a double bonus, but it is on Odin. His second personal foul. Kyle Blakesley's kind of keeping his team hanging around in this thing. Definitely come out with a lot of energy in the second quarter here. Blakesley with the shot up and switches through. He's got six now on four of five shooting from the free throw line. Also had a nice pull-up jumper over a guy earlier on in the first quarter. Blakesley dribbles, looks at the shot, and this one is up. And off the front of the rim as Maxwell pulls in the defensive rebound. And Blakesley has now missed two at the free throw line. And we're going to have a turnover, actually, by Sterling. They're ninth on the night. So Ellenwood with another chance with 37 seconds to go in the first half to cut into a 16-point lead. Now Clawson out of the top of the key, kicks it over to Blakesley on the wing. Inside, ill-advised pass, Dylan 
by Guy Odin. He gets it ahead to Maxwell. Nobody steps up to stop him. And they're going to draw, they're going to call the block on Derek Hayes. He's trying to get down the other end of the floor to get in front of Maxwell, who nobody picked up as he was running down the floor. And that's going to be Garrett Hayes' third personal foul already. The ninth team foul and going to send Maxwell to the line. Teammates left Garrett Hayes hung out to dry. They are the best thing he could do is step back and do what he did. Maxwell knocks in the first free throw. He's got three on the night as Garrett Hayes goes to the bench. Was replaced by Jake Christensen, the 5'11 senior. Maxwell's second shot is up and good. The perfect two for two from the line, and he's got four now, 30 to 12, with 20 seconds to go in the first half. With the first first half, as Clawson gets it off to the other side to Corbett, drives inside, flips this one up. Fans wanting to charge on this side, block on the other end is no call is is deemed, but. Sterling turns the ball over on the other end, and that's going to be the 10th turnover now for Sterling. A good drive by Clawson, but no reward for it. Final second, Ellenwood had an opportunity to close the first with points. And a deep three. You betcha, Kyle At the half-court drive as time expired. What a shot from Kyle Corbett standing on the half-court drive. He knocks this one in, cutting the lead to 15. Welcome, Eagle fans, to the Halftime Show. We have music teacher Mrs. Underwood with us today. Focusing strictly on Mystic Blues, is there anything new about the group this year than from past years? Yes, the group is a little bit smaller this year. Instead of uh, 20 or 24 in the group, we've got around 16 uh, solid singers this year. All right, what do you think about the sound of those solid singers? They're wonderful. We haven't had a blend like this in the past. Um, just really good, hardworking students, I think. If you hear them, you'll agree. It's a really great group this year. Mrs. Underwood, do you want to tell everybody about our spring trip coming up? Absolutely. In March, over the first part of spring break, we will go to Branson, Missouri, and we'll spend four days um, doing clinic work, singing uh, for different groups in the Branson area, and taking in some of the sites. All right, now tell us about the big fundraisers that we have. We just finished with a really nice fundraiser selling Christmas wreaths. We cut down our own trees and uh, made them into wreaths and decorated them and sold them. We did really well with that. We also have several basketball uh, concession items coming up at basketball games after the beginning of the new year. And we've got our big band dance coming up, and we also have after dinner theater, which is always a really good fundraiser. Right. All right. Now, what upcoming shows and performances do we have? Well, Mystic Blues is really busy during this time of year. Uh, we have a lot of performances over the Christmas season. So we'll be singing a lot over the next two weeks. And then a week from uh, yesterday, next Thursday, we have our winter concert at St. Joseph's Church, 7 o'clock, and Concert Choir and Mystic Blues will both be featured. So we hope everybody will come out for that. All right. Well, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. I know we're all looking forward to the upcoming performances. Yes, we are. Enjoy the rest of the game. second time out and get coach Bill Duncan on here to talk about his women's game. We'll be right back here on Star 107.9.
Whether you had planned to attend another college or weren't planning on attending college at all, it's not too late to enroll for classes at Barton Community College. Take one class or many classes, online or in person, GED classes, or perhaps get workforce training. Find what drives you at Barton. And if you are unsure what you want to do, Barton can help you with that as well. Campus tours are available, so call the admissions office today and get driven with Barton. Welcome back to Ellenwood High School. We're now joined by Ellenwood Eagles girls basketball coach Bill Duncan. And coach, you had a tough game tonight. You ended up losing 30 to, uh, 50 to 30. How do you feel your team played tonight? Well, actually, we played better than we did last night. I think we took a step forward. Um, second half was a lot better. It was a 15-point game at halftime. And then, you know, they beat us by 20, so they outscored us five points in the second half. If we, we had a spurt there of four minutes in the fourth quarter, and if we could play the whole game like that, uh, this team's going to be kind of special. Your team was limited to 18 turnovers tonight. It, it seems like a high number, but for your team so far this season, that's relatively low. Do you feel your team is getting better at, at committing less turnovers? Maybe that will uh, end up with some more victories. Yeah, before the Christmas break, the girls had a goal of 15. And we hope to get that under 10 by, you know, when we start sub-state. So, yeah, they're getting a lot better. You know, when you go from 29 to 18, that's a low number, but we want it under 10. You have a player in Lauren Sill that kind of got off to a slow start. She ended with 14, a respectable number. What can your offense do as you go forward after this game to try to get her more involved and get that point total up? Well, they're just trying, they're trying to take her out of the game, and they did a good job. You know, she was, she's taking good shots. She's not forcing anything. I think last year she, she tried to force, you know, a little bit, and she, she'd go four for 16. You know, this year she shot, what, 40% tonight, 60% last night. She's taking really – she's starting to understand the offense. And, you know, with the new coach, she's picking it up well. Uh, my, my other girls, my outside shooters, they got to just start knocking the shots down because when you shoot 28% from the field, it's going to be hard to, you know, win ball games. You got it. You're going ahead now. You've got a couple games left before the Christmas break. What can you do with these last two games? Try to get your team ready for the second half of the season. Well, Otis Bison, I think they're a small 1A school. Um, you know, we'll try a lot of different things with them. We'll just, we got to get our we got to get our offense running. Um, we still come down and we're confused. Um, Friday night we have TMP and that's going to be a stepping stone for us. See how we play against them. They're returning state champions. Went 26 and one. If we can play them tough, anything can happen. And I told the girls who we had next and you know what I expected of them. And, and the girls really step up. They just got to bring it every night. They got to bring it eight minutes every quarter. They they can't have a you know just a shutdown and not not play the game the way it's supposed to be played. All right. Well, thank you, coach. That was Coach Bill Duncan for the Lady Eagles. We're looking forward to talking to you on Tuesday as your team travels to Otis Bison. We'll take another quick time out here on the Barton Community College Halftime Show. When we come back, we'll run through a couple of your stats and scoring from the first half here on Star 107.9. Manweiler Chevrolet of Boisington has been serving the Cheyenne Bottoms area for over four generations. When you're ready for a new truck or car, be sure to stop by Manweilers and visit with Gene or the guys. They have a wide range of new trucks and new cars, plus a complete body repair shop and service department. Manweiler Chevrolet, in business for over four generations. Till Printing offers a complete line of printing and promotional products. If you need business forms, computer forms, brochures, or just a few cups or pens, Till Printing can do it all. With a tradition of excellence since 1967, Till Printing is proud to serve the Ellenwood and Great Bend area. Till Printing congratulates the Eagles on achieving teamwork, leadership, and good sportsmanship. For a quality pre-owned car or truck, visit KW Auto Sales in Ellenwood. If they don't have what you're looking for, no problem. Kerry will travel far and wide to find you the right vehicle. Plus, you can rest assured knowing your car or truck purchased from KW Auto Sales is always reasonably priced and backed by a warranty. KW Auto Sales of Ellenwood is proud to support Ellenwood Eagle Athletics. Ellenwood High 
Cooler's beat. Ellenwood Eagles trailed the Sterling Black Bears by 15 at the half, 30 to 15 here. And if you'd like uh, to follow the Ellenwood Eagles as they go on the rest of their season, you can check out ellenwoodhighschool.ihi.com where they'll be streaming every game home or away on the web. You can just see some video, and if they can pick up our broadcast, you'll get to hear us as well. So that's a great opportunity for fans who you know, maybe don't want to make the trek out to some of the away games or if it gets a little cold outside and want to stay home for the game, you can always turn on your computer and check them out. That's ellenwoodhighschool.ihi.com. A friend of mine in Newton is checking us out on iHi tonight, and he says it sounds good, looks good. And it's a great opportunity for people if they don't live in Ellenwood to keep up with the Eagles. That's very good. There's a, just a handful of high schools in the state of Kansas that I know of that have the capabilities to do this and actually do it. Uh, so it's a great opportunity to get a lot of people involved, to get the community involved as well. We've got kind of a one-sided ball game here, but really you feel Ellenwood, if they can start knocking out some shots, playing better on the defensive glass, they can really climb back into this ball game. I'm really impressed with the Ellenwood offense in every respect but rebounding. They've gotten beaten up on the board. 19-8, to 8, and that can't happen. You know, of course, with the size and athleticism and the Sterling, it's going to be tough. But, you know, like I said earlier, Shane Duncan always says you don't have to be big to rebound. You just have to box out hard and work. I was always told by coaches it doesn't matter how tall you are, it's how wide you can get on blocking out and rebounding. Obviously, Ellenwood doesn't have that. It doesn't have the size of Sterling. Whenever Sterling can start a 6'4", a 6'2", and a 6'1", and then bring a 6'4 guy off the bench. That's very hard to contend with if you don't have the size. But Ellenwood definitely has a great opportunity here in the second half to come out. And Wes, what, is, what are some things that this team needs to do in the second half? Well, first of all, it's got to be about the rebounding. They can't give the second chances to the Black Bears. They've got to do a better job from the free throw line. Ellenwood left at least six points on the floor at the free throw line. And then we're inside a 10-point game if Ellenwood can cash in those opportunities from the free throw line. Got to keep the composure on the offensive end of the floor. Don't settle for three-pointers. Take the ball off the dribble. Kyle and Kyle need to get in the lane. And at some point, I'd like to see Ian Daring or somebody else post up inside, challenge those big guys, draw the defense, and see what they can get out of that. Gary might not be the tallest guy out on the floor, but he's definitely got some size to him. And you mentioned it. If he can get maybe his post up, get some good position, a couple of head fakes or an up and under away, he might be looking at an open layup. We're going to take one final break here on the Barton Community College Halftime Show. When we come back, we'll give you your first half stats and get you ready for the second half between Sterling and Ellenwood with Sterling leading 30-15. to 15. Zip Stop is now serving Hunt Brothers Pizza at three locations. Stop in at 10th and Grant or 19th and Main in Great Bend or 200 East Santa Fe in Ellenwood for great tasting Hunt Brothers Pizza. Get a whole pizza or buy it by the hunt. The Zip Stop serves pizza just the way you like it. All toppings, no extra charge. Zip Stop, baby. It's convenient, fast, clean and fun. Do the Zip Stop, baby, when y'all on the run. Hi, I'm Emma Smith. Sports has given me a lot to smile about over the years. But as an athlete and a father of young athletes, I know how important it is to protect yourself from injury. That's why I've teamed up with the American Association of Orthodontists to encourage athletes to play it safe. I've seen firsthand how quickly an accident can happen when out on the field, the court, or even the dance floor. Wearing protective gear like mouth guards, face masks, and helmets can reduce the risk of injury and keep you in the game. Visit braces.org. Welcome back to Ellenwood High School. The Eagles are trailing by 15, 30 to 15 over under the Sterling Black Bears. And we'll quickly run through your first half scoring. For the Sterling Black Bears, they are being led by Chad Bennett with seven. A handful of guys and Aaron Walton and also Trey Lott with six. And then you throw in Bryant Peterson, Austin Maxwell, and Guy Odin with four. And that's the extent of the scoring for Sterling on the Ellenwood side of the ball. They're being led by Kyle Blacksley with six. You throw in, or excuse me, Kyle Corbett has seven. Black Blakesley with six. And then you throw in a 
couple more guys. I know Ian Gehring has two. That's what I was looking for, and that's pretty much the extent of the Ellenwood scoring. So they're being led by, by two guys. The two guys you've talked about the entire game, Kyle and Kyle. What do they need to do here in the second half to really get their team going? Well, Ian's going to have to establish a post presence in there. If he can get himself down low, you know, maybe he draws a foul. Maybe he just draws the defense and creates a better opportunity for a teammate. Otherwise, it's going to be all about the dribble drive penetration from the Kyles. Opportunities to get to the line. Ellenwood can never fall in love with the three-point shot and settle for the outside shot, or this thing is going to get ugly real fast. The Eagles aren't shooting a very good percentage from the field, just at 20%, only 14% from behind the arc on just one of seven shooting. They're shooting four of 20 from the field overall, and only six of 12 from the free throw line. And uh, those are those are the, the areas that this team has really got to work on, especially at the free throw line. You can't leave opportunities at the free throw line uh, because those are easy points. Those are points you need. You've got to have those points. Well, and you look back, they missed two front ends of one and ones in that second quarter, and you don't you don't get those back ever. Then you've got two misses for Kale Clausen. Blakesley went one for two on two opportunities. So that was really a bad second quarter at the free throw line, and Ellenwood would be back in this ballgame if they could have cashed those in. Really, the foul trouble hasn't plagued Ellenwood that much. They do have one guy with three, and that's Garrett Hayes. He picked up three quick fouls in that first half and really only there's only one other person with two and that's Kyle Corbett Corbett excuse me so uh, it's not that's not really a problem there is a little bit of hope for Ellenwood on Sterling's side of the ball you have Aaron Walden one of the starters a 6'2 senior he's one of the leading scorers and he's got three fouls already so if you can kind of attack him a little bit maybe try to get that fourth on him early in this third quarter, possibly make him sit most of the second half. Well, and he's, aggr he's an aggressive kid on the offensive end, so if you get your rotations right on defense, you might get a charge. Then Aaron Walton sitting on the bench, and things can turn around in a heartbeat. Another guy that they might want to look to attack is Guy Oden. He's got two. It'll take a little bit more to get him out of the ball game, but he's one of those guys down low that you feel if you can get him on the bench, uh, which he's on there now. He's not one of the starters, but if you can get him on the bench, it's going to help your team out a lot more. As Blakely drives in the lane, puts up a quick floater, misses, but they're going to draw. They're going to call the jump ball. Possession going back over to Sterling after Ellenwood started the, the second half with the basketball. Good aggressive move by Kyle along the baseline. Shot just wouldn't go. At some point this year, Kyle's going to find that groove and find his range. He's a good shooter and a good scorer. That's a good take by Kyle Blakely. Humphreys has it at the top of the key over to Lott. Back to Humphreys trying to get it inside to Walton at the high post, but good defense by Ellenwood. Back to Humphreys over to Lott. Into the corner to Maxwell. He goes up and misses the shot. Pulls in his own rebound. Misses the shot again. And Kyle Blakesley comes up with the defensive rebound. The two missed shots by Walton leading to possession for Ellenwood as Corbett looks over to the coach and he calls out the play. Back to the corner for Blakely. He drives the lane. Quick pull up. Rims out again as a tip in by Claus and a couple of volleyball slaps up by him. Goes in the hands of Corbett, or excuse me, Blakely. And he puts in his eighth point of the night. And Ellenwood, the first one on the scoreboard as Bennett drives in the lane, kisses this one up off, off the glass. And he's got nine to lead all scorers in for either team. That's a little lollygagging by the Ellenwood defense there. That's all day for the Black Bears. They're looking for that. Gehring with a bank shot from the free throw line. Knocks it in, gets knocked down, but no call. Right ahead for Sterling to lot as his shot is blocked by Blakesley. Pulled in by Bennett. He gets it in the corner, tries to penetrate, has the ball knocked away. We're going to say this one's going to stay with him. Blakesley put up his 10th point on the other end, and now Sterling has it out of bounds with Bennett to key it in. Offensive end, Elmo looks good, coming out with two nice drives from Kyle. Defensively, they look bad, giving up the two easy transitions opportunity it's now inside walton goes up and he knocks it in walton's got seven on the night as now corbett has it for the eagles guarded by lot getting across the half court strap they've been trying to get the back door passes going no luck there as corbett still has it drives in lane goes up over walton rims this one off as Clawson inbound gets the gets the rebound 
back out to Corbett. He misses the three, but pulled in by Gehring in the corner. Back to, Cla back to Corbett, over to Clawson, and back out to Ringering. He calls out the play at the top of the key. Gets Good work by Ellenwood on the offensive board. Gets it into Gehring, over to Clawson, the three-point line. Tries to drive inside, a little spin move. Has got nothing. He puts up the shot off the side of the rim and pulled in by Humphreys. Now the ball is going to be tied up, but they're going to call the foul. Looks to be on Ellenwood. We'll wait for the official word. It is on Ian Gehring, his second, first team foul of the second half. And it's just simply aggressiveness, trying to go and get the ball, and gets a little bit too physical and draws the foul. Chance Clawson coming in for his cousin, Kale. Very similar players, a little different build, but they're both high energy guys. Those are the kind of, you, kind of guys you always like to have on your team as Humphrey kicks it off to Bennett. Back over to Humphreys at the top of the key. It tentatively attacks the zone. Back to Humphreys. Over to Lott. Fakes the three. And over the top to Humphreys. Looks inside to Bennett. Just puts up a little floater off the side of the rim. Pulled in by Blakesley. Back over to Corbett now as he's running the point. Like he's been doing most of the game when he's in the when he has in been on the floor. Takes it out to Ringering, who decides to change the play. Gates it over to Gehring. Looks for somebody to come open and finds Clawson. Chance Clawson tries to go inside for Gehring and has this one picked away as Gehring comes up and he gets gets the steal. The 11th turnover by Sterling. Sterling won in a travel on Gehring. Looks though like he might have got away with one, but Ellenwood keeps the ball and comes out top to Chance Clawson. Over to Patrick Ringering, trying to find somebody open. Drive left side and kicks it off to Corbett. Corbett's been driving all game, and he tries it again, but no luck this time. Goes back at it, and they're going to call a block on Lott. That's going to be Lott's second first team foul of the, of the second half on Sterling. Well, Kyle's still trying to work his way into that lane. Sterling's not going to back down one bit. They're going to be nose-to-nose -nose guarding you all night long. They like to play it physical. Referee having a little laugh there with Kyle Corbett down on the baseline. Ringering with it, trying to key it inside. He's got Gearing inside, and that's exactly where they're going to go, but a bad pass leads to a scrum for the ball, and Ringering going back inside for it. And they might call the jump on this one. Looks as though it's going to stay with Ellenwood on the alternate possession. Excellent post up by Ian Gearing. I'm not sure why they didn't go straight off the inbound into Ian. Ian did a good job of getting low, finding his position, getting his hands up, creating a target. He really deserved the ball quicker than he got it there. And the pass was just a little bit low into the outside. Tough to handle for Gehring. And if they can get that pass a little bit higher, more near his chest, he might be able to do something with it. Get an opportunity here as Ellen will look at it inbound with Ringering. Plays it up top to Chance Clawson. Nearly loses his balance, but gets it off to Ringering in between the circles out on the wing. Tries to go inside for Corbett. Finally finds Gehring and goes to a cutting Blakely, but Pass tipped around and tracked down by Ringering. Ringering calling for a guy to pop out, and he gets Blakesley as Clawson cuts and off to Corbett on the wing. And he's going to get called for his second push off of the night. That's his third foul, the second team foul. And that's one thing that Claus, or excuse me, Corbett has tried to do, create the separation. But at times, that arm's coming out just a little bit too much, and the officials are going to call that. Well, Owen was doing a good job creating a post presence there. The guards just didn't get the ball to the high post where it needed to be. Humphreys has it out on the top of the key. Fakes inside over the lot. He fires up the three off the side of the rim. Tips around and pulled in by Gary for Ellenwood. Back over to Corbett. Baseball pass ahead. Intercepted by Humphreys on the other end. So the fifth turnover on the night so far. And Ellenwood steals it right back. Goes ahead to Clawson as Gary gets the deal for the 12th turnover by Sterling. Score a little flopsided, but the door is open. It's, a little, it's cracked, but it's still open a little bit. Ellen would need to take advantage of all the opportunities they're given. Gehring with it, hands it off to Corbett. And they're going to get a timeout for Ellen Wood. Just 30 second variety, so we'll keep this one here. It's really, Ellen Wood did a nice job in the first. 
Next Tech Wireless is offering the best deals of the year. Activate now and all phones are free. Android phones, BlackBerry smartphones, texting and camera phones are all free. You'll also receive one month of free service. Want more? Bring us your number and we'll add in $200 cash per line. Activation is also free when you donate a new toy. Come to Next Tech Wireless today for free phones, free service, free activation, and more. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. Next Tech Wireless, you're covered nationwide. Set their running, flash into the high post, and then dive into the basket. They're just missing opportunities in the lane right now with entry passes. They really are. This is a, an Ellenwood team that's been trying to claw their way back in, have not been able to close it to 15 and, and keep it that way. It's still at 34-19 with three minutes to go in the third quarter. Corbett has that at the top of the key, gets it over to Ringering, who drives baseline and kicks this one out of bounds. That will be the 11th turnover now for Ellenwood. As Ring a Ring just got a little bit too far ahead of himself and kicks it out of bounds. That's exactly right. Patrick's as quick as anybody, but there actually his mind was a lot quicker than his feet. The ball ended up dribbled off his leg. Humphreys over to Gellerman. Back to Humphreys at the top of the key. Plays it over to the wing and gets it right back at, at the top of the key. Looking for Patterson over on the wing and finds him and finds a cutting. Maxwell lays this one up and in. Maxwell with six now on the nine as Ellenwood is falling behind 36 to 19 with two and a half to go in the third. Excellent pass, even better cut by Maxwell. There's a nice back door by Chance Clawson, blocked away by Guy Oden, I believe. And really a great pass by Gehring at the high post. Quickly looking back door after the double team came, find, found Clawson, but Guy Oden just a little bit too tall, comes up from behind and knocks this one out of bounds. Ellenwood will keep it on the out of bounds play. There's a little confusion inside, gets it to Corbett, quick shot. Up and rattles in off the rim, off the backboard, and back in as, Cla as Corbett now, excuse me, with nine. Great shot there to get some more points. That, uh, that sequence there created by the good job getting the ball into the high post and then down low. Odin misses a shot. Maxwell pulls it in, and he misses a shot as well. And Peterson falls to the ground and turns this one over for the 13th turnover as Corbett runs the point after he got the steal. Trying to set up the offense, drives baseline, thinks about the quick turnaround, gets it inside to Blakesley, and he's going to travel. He juggled the ball for the 12th turnover and shuffled his feet just a little bit before he gained sole possession of it, calling the travel, getting the ball back over to Sterling. Uh, the referee called that on the baseline from up high. You can see he got pushed in the back by a Sterling player, but the referee had no opportunity to see that from where he called it, so it looked like a travel to him. Patterson over in the corner to Gellerman. Thought about the three initially. Skip pass over to Humphreys. Drives inside. He's knocked over Blakesley as Maxwell missed the shot. Garrett Hayes in the foul or into the into the game with three fouls. Saves this one in and goes over to Corbett. That's going to be a, a good sign for Ellenwood getting the ball back and getting a little bit of a defensive stop. Garrett Hayes a little nimbler than he looks. He's a big fellow out there, but that was a brilliant save. Very good, just getting it back into the into the court, and getting it to one of his players. Hayes has it now at the three-point line, kicks it over to Blakesley, fires up the three, off the back of the iron, and pulled in by Patterson for Sterling. Patterson runs the floor. Nobody steps up to stop him. Almost a steal by Corbett. But it's going to go out of bounds, staying with Sterling. And both teams bring it in subs as Aaron Walton checks in for Sterling and Kale Clawson comes in back in the game for Ellenwood. That's a pretty darn good take by Kyle Blakesley there. He had a good look at the rim. Those shots are going to fall for Kyle before this season's over. Gellerman fakes the three, goes inside to Odin, back out to Patterson. Gellerman for three, off the back of the arm, but pulled in by Walton. He goes right back up with a quick shot, pulled in on the offensive rebound by Humphreys. Has the ball tipped out of bounds, but they're going to call the foul on Ellenwood. That's going to be Cale Clawson's second, team third. So Sterling will keep this one out of bounds. Gellerman out on the wing, fakes the three, a very good fake. Almost got Clawson up in the air, but goes inside to Odin. Odin, quick turnaround, hook shot, knocks it down. Guy Odin has six points on a nice stretch in the lead out to 17 now with 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. Sterling up 38 to 21. Clawson has it out on the wing. Kale Clawson over to Hayes at the three-point line near the top of the key. Over to Kale to Clawson. Misses the three and pulled in by Patterson with seven seconds to go ahead to Odin. 
He breaks it down and gets inside with an easy layup. Guy Odin with eight. And that will round out the third quarter. And Sterling running away with this one. 40 to 21. That's the end of the third quarter. Ellenwood. Next Tech Wireless is offering the best deals of the year. Activate now and all phones are free. Android phones, BlackBerry smartphones, texting and camera phones are all free. You'll also receive one month of free service. Want more? Bring us your number and we'll add in $200 cash per line. Activation is also free when you donate a new toy. Come to Next Tech Wireless today for free phones, free service, free activation, and more. Certain restrictions apply. See store for details. Next Tech Wireless, you're covered nationwide. Brahms in Great Bend. Good luck, Eagles. Welcome back inside Ellenwood High School. The Eagles trailing by 19 of 40 to 21 here. And Wes, this has been a tough game for Ellenwood. Is they they really don't have any really scores that can really hurt you past the two Kyles. We've had some, we've seen some good flashes from guys, but nobody that's picking up the, the slack and they can't stop the two big guys down low. Yeah, Sterling is just a really tough matchup with all the size and athleticism inside. That, that last sequence for Guy Oden and all the games I've seen him play here in Ellenwood and other places, that's the best I've ever seen of him. Nice hook shot and then he comes down, runs the floor and gets two more points to end the quarter. Gatorson for Sterling opened up the, the fourth quarter with a three, but he misses. And Kyle Corbett pulls in the defensive rebound for Ellenwood, getting their getting their offense started on the other end right away as Gearing trying to post up at the high at the free throw line. Corbett goes inside for Ringering, who kicks it across to Kale Claus and knocks it down. Kale Claus with his first two points of the night. And quickly showing back ahead. Patterson drives inside the lane, misses the shot, pulled in by Walton as a couple guys go down, and they're going to call Gehring with the foul as he came down and almost tackled Walton, and he comes up limping. Looks as though he may have rolled an ankle or possibly uh, up in a knee injury, so we might have to see him come out of the game as immediately Jake Christensen comes to the scorer's table, and in fact, he is going to go to the bench, maybe just walk it off a little bit, take a little weight off as he's wincing as he hobbles to the bench. Uh, unfortunately, Ian tweaked that knee a couple times in football, so it is something that's happened. Gellerman passed to Peterson at the baseline, back out to Gellerman, looks at the three, but decides to move it too far out and kicks it over to Jaderson, who's setting up the offense, directing it over to Gellerman, fakes inside to Miller, or excuse me, to Odin, and he's going to go inside, and they're going to call Jake Christensen with a push from behind on Odin. Now that's an interesting call with all the contact we've seen tonight where Jake's just barely behind the guy and gets whistled for one, but it'll happen. Walton out at the top of the key, fires over to Gellerman, fires up the three off the back of the iron, pulled in by Blakesley for Ellenwood. He's going to bring the ball to the floor, guarded by Jaderson. Quick spin move, trying to create some separation, goes over to Christensen tries to find a cutting ringer. He does quick shot up and off the side of the iron. Fought for, and they're going to call a foul. And this one looks looks like it might go against Jake Christensen again, and it does his second foul on each end of the floor. And that's going to be the sixth team foul already. And the foul disparity is a little bit lopsided here in the second half with six on Ellenwood and just one on Sterling. Well, Guy Oden created that foul with a beautiful box out. Nice fundamental box out from Guy Oden. I'm more impressed with him the more I see of him in this tournament. Jaderson over to the wing for Gellerman. Tries to go inside. Back to Jaderson. Quick fake inside. Gets it out to Patterson. Goes down baseline. Almost throws it away, and it was saved in by Cale Clawson. But back to Sterling. Jaderson over to Patterson. Fires up the shot. They're going to call the block inside on Patterson. Or, excuse me, Christensen. And already, Christensen comes into the game, has to replace Ian Gehring, who kind of tweaked a knee, and he's picked up three quick fouls and already putting Sterling in the bonus. Well, Jake gets five fouls, and he looks like he's in a hurry to try and use all five of them here before this game's over with. Peterson's first shot is up. Excuse me, Patterson's first shot is up. And good, he's going to perfect three of three from the line. He's got five on the night. Sterling stretched out a 41 to 23 lead with 6:15 to go in the ball game. Patterson's second shot is up and off the front of the iron. 
Blocked out a little bit and pulled in by Christensen. So Thanks, Patterson. Jake. He got the job done there with a nice box out. Now, there's no foul there. If you box the guy out, you're not going to get that foul call. So it's a positive whenever you don't commit the foul after you've committed three quick ones. As Patterson goes inside to Blakesley, and they're going to call the foul inside on Jaderson. That's going to be his first, second team foul. As subbing back into the game for Sterling is Trey Lott and Chad Bennett. Bennett, the leading scorer in the first half with seven. He's got nine, and Lott comes back in with his six points. Ellen replaces into Corbett, fires up a three off the side there, pulls in his own rebound, goes right back up with it, misses the shot again, and Aaron Walton pulls it in for Sterling. And already Lott bringing the ball back up the floor for Sterling. Finds, finds Walton on a quick jump off, and Walton has nine points. And Sterling stretches out a 20-point lead now with 5.40 to go in the, in the second half. Aaron Walton's a workhorse. He scores points in just about every way you can imagine. Kyle Blakely up with a three, can't get it. Guy Oden pulls in the rebound for Sterling. Back over to Jaderson, running up the far side of the floor. Going from left to right as Sterling back out to a lot of the top of the key. Looked at the three, had an open shot, but decides to pass it over to Bennett. Over to Jaderson in the corner, fires up the three, off the side of the rim and over the backboard. And it's going to go over to Ellenwood on the missed shot after it goes over the backboard. So the Eagles will get possession here as Austin Maxwell comes back in the game to replace Aaron Walton. Maxwell with six so far in the night, the 6'4 sophomore. And talk about a guy like that. He's just a sophomore and already very polished game. He's going to be good here in a couple of years. Well, this whole team is pretty much the same outfit that came into here last year. And they're, they're, the only thing different about them is they're even better. And they're going to be around for a while, like you said. Blake Lee fighting for the ball with Bennett. And it's going to stay with Ellenwood. As Bennett knocked it out of bounds, almost a turnover for Ellen Wood, but they're going to retain possession as Cale Clawson takes the inbound duties on the, the near side, right in front of Coach. Goes inside to Gearing, nice backdoor pass, but tipped away by a lot. It's going to stay over with Ellen Wood. That was a good pass, a good idea. Needed to be out in front of him more. Boy, that's just like they draw it up in practice. Boy, they had the pick, and then the nice backdoor cut just didn't execute the pass real well. Clawson trying to find someone in, and again, Lott tips it away from Corbett. It's going to stay with Ellen with two straight plays. Now, Trey Lott has come up with a defensive play just to tip the ball out of bounds. Quickly inbounds from Clawson, but it goes right in the hands of Bennett. They get the steal for the 13th Ellenwood turnover. Jaderson ahead to Lott. Tries to go inside to Maxwell. Has the ball tipped and stolen by Kale Clawson. The 15th turnover for Sterling as now Chance Clawson has the ball out on the top of the key, guarded by Jaderson. Gets it ahead to Blakely, trying to look inside, but they're setting screens, but nobody's open. Back inside to Corbett. Quick spin move, puts up the quick shot, and he's going to draw the foul. And Corbett is going to is going to be going to the line to shoot two. That is going to be the third team foul on Sterling here with four and a half minutes to go. That's going to be the first personal foul on Chad Bennett. Corbett's free throw is up and good. He is three of four on the night. He's got ten. The first eagle in double figures. The second shot is up and falls for him as well. So he's four of five from the line. He's got eleven so far on the night. Jaderson with it for Sterling. Back over to Bennett on the wing. Back to Jaderson. Kicks it inside for DeWerf. Nearly stolen by Owenwood. Inside to Odin. He's got a wide open pass with a bucket. Odin puts it in. He's got 10. And Guy Odin just dominating Ellenwood down low. Well, he did a good job of flashing to the high post, and that just gives you an easy layup there. Lake lead for three off the side of the rim and pulled in by Bennett. For Sterling ahead to Maxwell. Almost loses the handle. Goes up over one of the Ellenwood defenders. That was uh, Kale Kloss, and Maxwell puts in his eighth point of the ninth. Stretch the lead to 47 to 25 with 3.45 to go in the game. Jaderson nearly pokes it away from Chance Clawson over to Kale Clawson. He fires up a three, and he's going to draw the foul on the push from Maxwell. And Kale Clawson going to the line to shoot three. That's going to be the second personal fourth team foul. Austin Maxwell being called for the foul, and Clawson already 0 for 2, of, two from the line with just two points. Well, Kale got let off the hook there. I, frankly, that's a bad shot. That's, that's not a shot that 
you know, you can get that at any point in the possession. Kale's not really a three-point shooter at this point. But the foul sends him to the free throw line, and he actually has a chance to put three in the scorebook right now. He does get his first one to fall as it rimmed around a little bit, but Clawson knocks in his first one. He's got three. Second one is up. The is through. That one looked a little bit prettier for Clawson. He's got four now on the night, so he's a free throw away from getting the three-point shot without actually knocking it down from behind the arc. Well, the concerning thing for me, back-to-back possessions, Ellenwood started to settle for the threes, and that's not ever going to help this team out. Clawson gets the three points the hard way. He puts in all three free throws. He's got five on the night. But even though he missed the three-point shot, still gets credited for three points. And Bennett kicks it back over to Jaderson, attacks the defense, back over to Bennett. Looks to the bench for a play call, and he's going to walk it out just a little bit and set it over to Jaderson. Sterling really not looking like they're in any hurry to set up any offense. Jaderson dancing around with the ball. Takes it over to DeWert. Thinks about the three. Goes inside for Kirk Engelin in the game for the first time. Back over to Bennett. Ellenwood's got to have to tighten up their defense. Try to force the steal. Goes inside to Odin. Kicks it back out to Bennett. Bennett fires up the long two-point shot. They're going to call Gearing with his third personal foul on the blockout. Was holding him from was holding Bennett from going around and getting the rebound. So Bennett's going to go to the line to shoot two. Well, it's the same foul that, that they had at the other end where Kale Clawson got three, the, two, the three free throws. Here, Chad Bennett will get two. They, they say he kind of pushed back into him on the box out. I, I don't know that I really agree with that call too much because that's what the kids are taught to do. And there's, a, there's a difference between a good lockout and pushing the guy back, trying to create space, and it looks as though Garing was just trying to get a blockout, trying to make his coach happy. And putting, trying to grab another rebound as Bennett knocks in both of his free throws. He's got 11 now on the night. He becomes the top scorer for Sterling. And, you know, in full disclosure, I didn't like the call that Kale got at the other end. As Gehring answers right back with a shot of his own. He's got six. A nice 15-foot mid-range jumper from Gehring. The big guy stepping out, showing his range. Now it's... Jaderson has it back at the top of the key, setting up the offense. Sterling really kind of going to a stall style of offense, really not aggressive. Goes across to Ingerlin, back to Bennett, who has a nice open lane in the middle, but decides to go to the baseline instead. And he has the ball tipped away from him. Looks as though he was going up for a shot. May have had it stolen. We'll give him a 16th turnover on the night. As Corbin now has it, gets the screen from Gehring, tries to attack baseline, kicks it over to Blakesley for three, knocks it down. Kyle Blakesley with 11 so far on the night. And he is starting to heat up a little bit, trying to get his team back into it. Jaderson over in the wing for DeWert. Goes inside for Odin. Quick turnaround shot off the front of the rim. Pulled in defensively by Corbin. Almost has stolen away by DeWert. But back goes the other way is Ellen Wood with Chance Clawson running the point as he bounces this one over to Blakesley out on the wing, tries to find Gehring, has a little bit of post, uh, has a, a nice setup against Odin. He, Corbett drives in the lane, and he's going to draw a foul. This one could go on one of two people. It could either be on Guy Odin, and I believe that is who they're going to call it on. Could have also gone on Kirk Engelin. That's the fifth team foul now for Sterling, and it, it was Odin's third personal foul as Corbin misses his first free throw. He has had been shooting fairly well from the free throw line at 4 of 5, now 4 of 6. And he's done 0 for 1 on this trip. Chance has played an all, Chance Klaus has played an awful lot of point guard here in the second half. Talking to Coach Duncan there as the free throw goes up and in. He's got 12 on the night to be the leading scorer for Ellenwood. A ball stripped away. It's going to be 5 for and eventually kicked out as Engelin comes up with it for Sterling. And looks like they're going to call a foul on Ellenwood. So wait and see what the officials call. It's going to be on Clawson, Kale Clawson, his third 19 foul. That's going to send Engelin to the free throw line for his first attempt. It's going to be a one and one style. First one is up and rattles home. So Engelin has his first point of the night. Strickton lead to 50-34 to with a minute 20 to go in the game. 
second shot up and banks in as well. Dingolin's got two. Goes perfect from the line on that trip. Now Corbett has it out on the wing, kicks it over to Clausen, goes down inside, gets a little separation and air balls this one, but his cousin Clausen pulls in and kicks it back out to Blakesley, knocks it down. Kyle Blakesley with 14 on the night. He becomes the top scorer for Ellen Wood and quickly down the other end as Gellum, Gell, Gellerman. Gellerman gets it off to Jaderson, kicks it inside, goes out to Kurt uh, Engelin as he misses the shot and it's pulled in by Ellen Wood quickly ahead to Blakesley. He drives in the lane, he's going to draw the foul. Should be going to the line to shoot two as it's a 16 foul on Sterling. It's going to be on DeWerf, his first personal. The junior guard for Sterling is. It was a great move by Blakesley getting inside and drawing the foul. Boy, that's the big news late in this game. Kyle Blakesley knocks down two three-pointers and now gets himself to the line. Doesn't convert the free throw. I'm really looking at this as maybe something to build on for the next game. Kyle finally got that outside shot to fall. Maybe the confidence will develop and carry over to that Otis Bison game. That usually, that's usually what happens with strong shooters. You knock down a few in a game and then you kind of start to pick things up, but He's got to start knocking down some free throws as he goes 0 for 2 on that trip, and Jaderson has it. Four Sterling on the other end. Over to Gellerman, back to Jaderson, near the mid stripe circle. Sitting on the eagle wing at half court. Nice big eagle at the center court mark here, and Ellen Woods is Jaderson dribbling the ball around, and surprisingly, Ellen Woods just kind of let him stand out there at a 51 to 37 lead with 20 seconds to go, and this, look, this looks like it's going to be your ball game. As Sterling's going to go on to win this game, and they're going to take the championship here for the Ellenwood preseason basketball tournament. Jaderson just dribbling around. We're waiting for the final five seconds, and there they go on and on the clock, and Ellenwood falls tonight 51-37 to to the Sterling Black Bears. When we come back, we'll start the Avid Carpet and Flooring postgame show here on Star 107.9. Hi, I want to 